All right, so this, we've talked about a couple of different methodologies. This is a great one. This is earnings per share, treasury stock method, all right? So this is the treasury stock method and treasury stock method, all right? So the treasury stock method assumes the company reported net income of 2.3 million, 2.3 million right here, 2.3 million for the year ended, oh, the 30th of June, 20, 2005. And it has the following, an average of, 800,000 common shares outstanding. Okay, so it gave it to us. Isn't that nice? 30,000 in options with an exercise price of $35 outstanding. No other potentially diluted securities. And its, mar uh, its market price averaged at $55 per share. Calculate the basic and diluted earnings per share. All right, well, basic, let's just start with that. That's easy, basic earnings. 2.3 million over the 800,000 gets us to our basic earnings per share. What's the basic earnings per share? Well, it's $2.88 per share. $2.88 per share, that's our basic earnings per share. So our diluted earnings per share, uh, we have these securities that have, this is an option. And how an option works, it's just like how it sounds. What you get is the right to buy something. You don't have to buy something, you get the right to buy it. And because you get the right to buy it, it gets executed in, in a certain way. And so what this one gives, these 30,000 options, is it gives its 30,000 different rights to purchase a share of the company at $35 a share. You have the right to purchase the company at $35 a share. And some of you might think that seems like a weird way to say it. Like, when do I get the right to buy it, right? That's like a, like a weird thing. What this is, is you're actually getting an option to buy it for less than its current market value. And, and managers kind of get these options all the time because what they say is we'll give you an option to uh, to purchase the company's shares at a fixed price. And basically it's free money if the company goes up in value. If, if it goes up in value beyond it, it's worth more. So for every dollar it's above that $35 per share, it's a free dollar that the company gives as part of the option. And over the last year, the market price average was $55 a share. So if we take $55 a share and we uh, subtract $35 a share, we get $20 a share. This is the value of each option, okay? The value of the option, I mean, you could take out future volatility and all other pricing things, but as a, at a bare minimum, this is the value. This is the actual, the value of the option and the amount that the company will have to use and pay to when somebody exercises it, $20,000. I'm sorry, $20 for every share. That's what the company will have to spend exercising it. Because you think about it, they, they'll get $35 to buy, uh, to get a share. They'll get a share and somebody will pay $35 and they have to provide something that's $55. So they have to make up the $20, $20 difference. So we take that $20, that's a difference here. And this is a little bit different than the book, but this is a lot more intuitive for me. So uh, uh, the way we do this is we take this $20 and then we multiply it by the number of options we have outstanding, which is 30,000. And we get an amount equal to $600,000. That's what all of these options are worth, $600,000. So if everybody executed this option, they, the company would have to pay out $600,000, okay? So that doesn't come out of net income. Some of you might be thinking, oh, well, we got net income and we did this other thing where we took something out because it was part of an expense. That is like a, it's not classified in, as, as an expense. This is something that happened from selling options related to equity. So that 600,000 wouldn't come out of, uh, of net income but we'd have to account for it somewhere. We'd have to get on the balance sheet. And what we do is we say, okay, uh, we have 600,000. Well, if we issued new equity, just take it like this. If we issued new equity, we could get, you know, maybe five, you know, on average, it was $55 a share. We could get $55 per share to issue this. So how many shares would we need to issue? Well, the 600,000 600, divided by the $55 a share what does that get us? It gets us to 10,909 shares of stock. These essentially would be new shares issued. 
So you could do the whole game of like, oh, 35, 20, but really what it amounts to is the economic value is equal to about 10,909 new shares being issued to account for this. So this 10,909 is, is the amount that, that you would basically be creating in new shares. Guess what? That's what we put in the denominator because that is the net value of the option. This was the original option price right here. Oh, I'm sorry. This was the option price. This was the stock price. You take the delta between those two and you get $20. That's what each option is worth. And so the shares outstanding, some of you might be tempted to put 30,000 in there, but that's really not what it is. It's 10,000 because that is the new amount needed to uh, meet the needs of, of these options being exercised. So what do we do with that? Well, we have our net income from our basic EPS and we didn't have any preferred dividends. The basic EPS is, we take that over the 800,000 and, uh, and then we have to add, don't forget, we have to add, we have to add this 10,909. These are essentially the net. And when we do that, we get a diluted earnings per share of $2.84. $2.84 is what we get. Pretty cool, right? So $2.84, $2.88. This is our basic and diluted earnings per share. And uh, yeah, that's how you calculate it. Um, the, the book provides a different methodology. Uh, the book says, okay, new shared issued at options exercise, shares that could be purchased with the cash received, they go through the cash received, they subtract it with the new shares issued, and then they multiply that out. And you end up with the same answer, the 10,909. It's the same answer. Instead of figuring out the net, I figure out the net value that the company gives up and assume that we have new shares issued. This is how the book would explain it. They share that the shares could be purchased with cash received, and then they'd also have to issue new shares to, to make up the difference potentially. And the, that would be, they'd have to issue new shares and the new shares they'd have to issue to kind of make up that difference in the value would be 10,909 of new shares outstanding. So, so that's the uh, example of a treasury stock with options, uh, uh, you know, the treasury stock method with, with an options exercise. So uh, that's, uh, there you go. See you in the next video.